Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are going to be continuing the memory mapping narration for IS-3. Today we shall be taking a look at the full memory mapping for Operator Irene, but before we do so, two quick things. Number one, first and foremost an apology because this video should have already been recorded and out last month, aka July, when Irene's memory mapping got added originally, but last month was very very swarmed with stuff so I never gotten around to record it, so you shall be getting it this month instead together with uh, Operator Lumens, who got released now in August, uh, which I'm also going to be recording right after this one is done, so uh, in a day or two from now you're pretty much going to get two videos for the price of one, essentially, I guess, at least this month. Uh, but, number two, quick reminder for anybody new to the memory mappings, different endings for IS-3 and so on and so forth, you will find different playlists in the description of this video, so for the memory mappings, for the different endings, and of course, for the uh, for the entirety of the stories for Stultifera Navis and Undertides. So, if you want to have a clearer picture and are new to this whole thing, everything is there. I would suggest maybe going through, obviously, the Undertides and Stultifera stories first, and then maybe familiarize yourselves once you know a bit more with the endings here. Because, as a, another quick reminder, the memory mappings, at least, that have been added so far, including endings number 2 and number 3 for uh, this gameplay mode, are all parts of a completely different, or rather different, uh, timelines of events, in which pretty much the only thing binding them together is that the Seaborn are on the offensive in different ways or forms, and we are observing pretty much what is happening not just to the world, but also here in the memory mappings, are observing how our individual characters, or rather operators from Rhode Island, are dealing with this whole thing. So then, with this out of the way, let's proceed into Irene's memory mapping. So, this is memory mapping number two, titled Lantern Bearers. And here on the left it says, As long as there are still people holding the coastline, Iberia will not die so easily. And the story goes as follow. Part 1. A soldier and an eager, two things you'd hardly ever see together back in the old days. Someone steps out from the shadows. Her whole body is clad in black, but the sword in her hand shines with a silver glow. The intruders did not expect anyone else to be in this cave. They had withdrawn from their posts on the cliff. The fourth tsunami had leveled most of their defenses overlooking the tidal zone, and also cut off their communications with the main force. Their whole way here, the endless ocean and its sea terrors had clung to their heels. The only two survivors are a soldier and a watchtower worker. They are both wounded, fatigued, hungry, and full of apprehension about the road both ahead, uh, both ahead of and behind them. Are you an Inquisitor? asks the Eager cautiously. The sharp blade pointed at them easily brings back old memories. You should recognize my sword and lantern. The speaker is now clear of the shadows. She is not holding the flames of castigation, but her lantern rests on the rock behind her. The soldier hesitates to lower his weapon. How could there be an Inqu Inquisitor around here? The defense line has collapsed. They've all either died or retreated inland. My duties are not yet complete. The last watchtower still stands, and the people are still standing their ground upon that cliff. Similarly, the ones who've returned to the sea will not give up trying to contact us. The person beneath the black cloak looks back towards the shoreline. If you want to make it inland from this cave, you won't get far without light. Eager, pick up the lantern and follow me. The lantern's faint light spills across the cave's slippery walls, and the shadows of the three figures grow lengthy. You uh, must be familiar with the rumors too, the soldier whispers in a hushed voice. The Seaborn disguise themselves as humans, first they infiltrate the church, then the army, finally ordinary towns as well, that's how the last outpost fell. They have no way of knowing if the person in front of them is actually an Inquisitor, but the Aegir knows they have no other choice. Part 2 
The Jaeger knows the soldier is telling the truth. Before the war began, people from the Inquisition taught them how to recognize sea monsters in human skin. Whether sea terror or seaborne, they could only imitate a human's walking posture, but actually had to rely on pushing their chitinous exoskeletons or tentacles against the ground. These would be revealed if they suddenly fell or were made to move quickly. But that was the past. Evolution is their speciality, after all. Half a month ago, a forward base received a distress signal from a nearby battle site and sent a team to rescue a group of remnants trapped by an army of sea terrors. That night, the forward base fell. Even its fortifications were unable to serve their purpose, because it was breached from the inside. Nobody could say for certain whether the sea terrors imitated these soldiers after devouring them, or if these soldiers accepted the metamorphosis themselves out of desperation. People came to realize that the faces most familiar to them could turn into enemies at any moment. Fear and mistrust spread among the people, and the defense lines started collapsing faster and faster. Researchers claim that the biological nature of the seaborn would prevent them from ever understanding what it means to conspire. Most likely, they simply smelled the metamorphosis of their kin among the crowd of people and were eager to approach them, to communicate with them in a more easily acceptable form, and to welcome them home. But the vast majority of people scoffed at this. For humanity, this was a war. During times of war, people always use the ways they are most familiar with to understand their enemy. What if this is also a trap? She didn't come to save us, but to lead us into the abyss. The soldier speaks through gritted teeth, eyes bloodshot from excessive fading you. We can't sit back with waiting to die. You might not have a home to return to anymore, but I do. I have to go back to Victoria. He raises his voice once more and rushes at the guide in front of him. The shadows along the wall, stone wall entangle, gradually deforming, elongating, expanding, splitting open, and then bursting forth. A blue-green fluid splashes across the rocks, with some bits of tissue sticking to the Eager's face. Part 3 A pitiful man. The one who remains standing wipes down her rapier. He misunderstood where his desire to attack me came from until the moment of his death. He still saw himself as a Victorian soldier, waiting for the war to end so he could go back to his hometown. Uh, when did he...? During the last battle, or maybe even before that. He probably doesn't remember himself. Maybe he accidentally bit off some of the enemy's flesh in the middle of a desperate melee thus planting the seeds of metamorphosis. She glances over at the surviving Jaeger. Everyone on the battlefield wants desperately to survive, which isn't too different from the sea terrors. The eyes beneath the hood burn brightly. Without a doubt, she must be an Inquisitor. The Jaeger instinctively recoils and spits a few times, fearing that the soldier's lingering cells might slip into his mouth. The two continue walking, one in front, one in back. The stench in the cave grows stronger and stronger. So many sea terror carcasses. Did you slay all of all of them yourself? I couldn't allow them to climb onto the cliff. Y you how long have you been here fighting by yourself? Not long enough. She sh she shakes her head. I once knew a captain. He called his ship the True Iberia. For his Siberia, he held out for 60 years. 60 years? We probably don't have much time left, but as long as there are people still on the coastline, Iberia will not go down that easily. She speaks softly. And I won't go down that easily either. They come to a narrow mountain crevice. There are no more sea terrors here, and the air outside is faintly palpable. You'll have to take the road below you by yourself. Take my lantern with you. Uh, what about you, then? Me? You still haven't figured it out yet. If you're that stupid, you must be pretty lucky to still be alive. Her voice even holds a slight trace of laughter. I once met another eager like you. Who knows? The two of you might just survive until the very end. 
Though the two clearly remain still, a shadow along the stone wall suddenly moves. Something slender slips out from beneath her cloak and squirms a few times before shrinking back. Shadow. Only then does the eager understand why this person never carried her own lantern along the way. It turns out the soldier guessed correctly, but even but if even an eager can lift the lantern of an inquisitor, does the question of identity really matter anymore? This lantern is the symbol of the Inquisition, given light by the will of an Inquisitor, and now it is yours, Eager. Now, more than ever, your path, Iberia's path, is in need of light. The Eager holds on tight to the Inquisitor's lantern. Um, what about you? Once I reach a safe place, I'll send people back to help. The Eager then thinks of the hand hidden beneath the cloak. Realizing that these words have probably long since lost their meaning to the person in front of him. Uh, at least tell me your name. I am Irene, an Iberian. As the former Inquisitor finishes speaking, she walks towards the dark tide with her head held high. And that is the full memory mapping for Irene and pretty much the conclusion to, you can pretty much imagine what will transpire next to Irene. But as we do know, some people can retain their human form even when fully transformed into Seaborn and maintain themselves even if they can still hear the call. But that obviously depends from person to person and for more on that, Please refer to the endings of IS-3, where that gets covered uh, quite a bit more, especially in ending 1. Ending 1 pretty much gives you the entire explanation as to why certain people can remain the way they are, even when fully transformed. But as a quick little bonus uh, before we end here, I want to add one uh, final thing, and that is, and you've probably seen it in the thumbnail for the video, is this picture. This is a picture you can, uh, or rather, this is an event you can find inside of IS-3. Uh, I've only seen it once, literally once so far. It was the last literal thing that I was missing in this entire thing. Uh, until they probably gonna add a couple of extra things with the final update. But this is obviously Irene. The picture itself is called Eve of Glory. And it says here, this Inquisitor hides her identity. But you can tell she is glad to see you one last time as an Inquisitor, as an Iberian, as an Operator. Interestingly enough, this event is tied to another event that you can uh, stumble across, or rather encounter, inside of IS-3. I didn't know about this, because I've never seen it before. Uh, probably will at some point get it again. But here is a tip. If you're playing through it, first and foremost, I do not know if this will... Uh, if this or rather if you need to be on a specific ending path, either ending 2, 3 or whatever, uh, or if it just spawns at a certain point uh, as a completely random and rare event, but to uh, to complete this event uh, fully, you've obviously, obviously given several choices, but the top choice, the uh, choice at the very bottom, uh, very top, pardon, is to give her Dario's lantern. So, Pro tip, if you find this event first, take the lantern and hope you will get this. I do not know yet, as of this recording, what happens next. I'll probably find out eventually anyway, <laughs> as I'm playing through this. Uh, but have fun, see what happens. But anyway, this will be it for the video. Thank you very much for watching and listening. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like. It helps me a lot in the algorithm and means a lot to me as well to see that you guys are enjoying these videos and of course if you're new to the channel consider subscribing there's a lot more narrated stuff and character voice stuff on the channel uh pretty much anything <laughs> that exists currently in the game <laughs> i don't think there are exceptions uh but yeah take a peek maybe you'll find something you like and of course i hope you have a fantastic day wherever you are and i will see you in the next one until then bye bye